Listen, this is going to be difficult. And this last three and a half years has absolutely changed my life. And you were there. And I'm forever grateful for that. But this, this just isn't working out. No, no. I didn't even know Emotiva when we were together. Never even heard of him. No, you are not disgusting. You're unique. You're beautiful. But this is the second time we've tried this. And it's just not working out. I am so sorry, Kef LS50 Meta Blue Speaker. It's not you. It's me. have been told all of the ways that I've gotten the Kef LS50s wrong. I don't have enough power on them. I don't have the right electronics. I should be listening to them in the near field. I'm not listening to the right music on them. But what I've noticed in life, in hi-fi or otherwise, is that if someone is constantly apologizing for something, there's probably something wrong. This is the Ugreen NAS Sync DXP4800 Plus. Storage space up to 96 terabytes. 10 gigabit ethernet network port. 12th gen 5 core Intel processor. And you can expand the memory up to 64 gigabits. It has one all-inclusive app. You can view pictures and videos, watch movies, use the app to manage and classify related files. With NAS Sync connected, use your phone or PC to access remotely. And it has an integrated AI Smart Assistant. The AI Smart recognition classifies your files by text, by subject in your photos, pets, family members. And the only thing you need to do is enter keywords, cat pictures. And of course it has professional data security compared with cloud drives. NAS Sync allows users to store massive personal data in trusted local devices, preventing leakage and surveillance. There's also a built-in security manager in the app, which protects data in real time and performs scheduled scans to prevent virus intrusions. So check out the link in the description. It's the Kickstarter. This Ugreen NAS is changing my workflow. I can store all of my video clips for my videos and there's a ton of them. Put all my music on there and access it remotely from my computer. Thank you Ugreen for sponsoring today's video. Check out the link in the description to their Kickstarter. This is the Kef LS50. We have to go all the way back three and a half years when this channel started because not these, but their older brother is really why this channel even exists. I owe the Kef LS50 the biggest debt of gratitude in my life because YouTube has changed my life and the LS50 is the reason I even have a channel. So let's review the Kef LS50 Meta. Specification. This is an eight ohm speaker, which means on paper, you should be able to drive this off of a variety of amplifiers. What have I driven it on? A whole bunch of amplifiers. Right now it's hooked up to the Cambridge Audio Evo 105, the DeLorean edition. Had it on the Teak AI 303. Had it on the Weem amp. <gasps> the horror. Also tried it on the Emotiva A1 monoblocks with the Cambridge Audio acting as a preamp. And guess what? That was enough. All right, I'm not putting every amplifier I own on the Kef LS50s trying to talk them into sounding good. They use the UniQ driver array technology. Makes your entire room sound like a sweet spot. I will say they do soundstage and image well. Aluminum cone woofer, a one inch vented aluminum dome tweeter. And this is a concentric speaker, which means 
the woofer surrounds the tweeter. And don't get mad at me because I do love Kef speakers. At least I love the Kef Q150. I think that's a brilliant speaker. Sounds awesome. I think it sounds better than the LS50 and people's heads explode when I say that. But that's just my opinion. Sensitivity, 85 dB. So this does on paper require some extra juice. Emotiva, the new XB2s, they're 86 dB. Also uses innovative meta material absorption technology. I will give them that. This thing is built like a cinder block. It's like one of those old clown punching bags that was like super heavy on the bottom. And when you just go, ooh, regardless of how you hit it, the bottom of it is very weighty. No way this cabinet is gonna be causing any resonance. And while we're on the subject of how it's built, it's beautiful. The finish, the paint on here is kind of a rough texture. Gorgeous, little surrounds around the drivers. Front baffle is curved. Absolutely beautiful speaker. Copper color, even the surround, it's kind of like a tractor tire, which I try to forget because I grew up on a farm. Incidentally, anybody that plays farmer as an upper middle class person that lives in the suburb makes me sad inside because I've worked really hard to get off the farm. I don't want to go back to the farm by raising chickens in my backyard. Has a frequency response of 79 hertz up to 28,000 hertz. So that should tell you something about this speaker. You really need a subwoofer with it. And I'm not blaming this speaker because I knew that going into this review because the first Kef LS50 that I had was like three quarters of a speaker because it doesn't make much bass. So with all that said, I made sure to run this with the SBS, SB1000 Pro, my subwoofer of choice. Why? Because I own one and it's in the corner. That was connected to the Cambridge Audio Evo. Recommended amplifier power, 40 to 100 watts. Cambridge Audio puts out 150 watts into eight ohms. Five-way binding posts on the back, ported design. It does come with some foam port plugs if you wanna jam them in there because 80 hertz is just too low. Cry, Little Sister, it's the theme from the Lost Boys soundtrack, which is amazing. <sighs> By Gerard McMahon. At the beginning of the song, over and over again, it goes, do, do, do. So it's fairly punchy. And these speakers on their own without a sub sounded really good, really clean. A complaint with this speaker is not about its clarity. It's not about its soundstage and imaging. You're gonna have to stick with me till the end till I tell you what my problem with this speaker is. But it's good. It's fine. Especially with the speaker that says it rolls off at 80 hertz, it's completely fine. There is enough bass here. And even if you don't have a subwoofer, it's still gonna give you a little bit of meat on the bone. Pet by a perfect circle. That thing comes in loud and proud with a boom. And actually, really punchy because I think a lot of this stuff is going on around 100 hertz, around 125 hertz. So on paper, this speaker should do an excellent job with that. And it did. The snare drum hit right after the bass drum. Super snappy. Great initial attack. And if you're not ready for this song and it comes on, it's going to cause you to stand up straight very quickly. Right? Hank's free range Pomeranian. Yeah, she didn't really care for it when that song came on. Did you? No, you didn't. Mumford and Sons, There Will Be Time. Baba Mall is on that. He's got a very baritone voice. Again, the LS50 Metas sounded pretty good. Good. They sounded good. Great soundstage and imaging. One of the things about a concentric driver is you get such a focused image. So bass is clean. I wouldn't call it textured. It actually sounds like the ELAC Unify 2.0, which is an aluminum driver. Redemption song by Bob Marley. Spectacular. First 15 seconds is just him strumming on a guitar. Interesting thing is, although this is super clean, there's a lot of reverb. You can hear details into the strings. The guitar doesn't particularly sound natural. It sounds a little bit 
metallic doesn't sound bad because you hear all of that reverb. You can visualize the string vibrating, but it's good. It's fine. Dumb. Here's where I was a bit surprised. The previous LS50s that I have, by memory, I obviously don't have them anymore because I had to sell them to buy more gear to review on this channel. I felt were a bit forward in the mid-range. I feel like this one is almost stepped back. Back into the left. Maybe it's back into the right. Anyway, I felt like dumb Kurt Cobain's voice was a little bit behind my fireplace. And that is the last thing that I would have guessed. So there's two things that the LS50 Metas are doing differently than I remembered. Number one, I think the mid-range vocals a little bit recessed compared to the previous one. Number two, I feel like the Metas have a little bit more bass punch. Ironic. Uninvited Alanis Morissette. Now, I know I'm onto something because this song is extremely sibilant the way it was recorded. And I'm not hearing a ton of sibilance out of this speaker. I think this thing is a little bit recessed in the mid-range and even upper treble. Dare I say, the mid-range on the Kef LS50 is slightly recessed. Harvester of S Sorrow? By Metallica. The symbols sounds like an aluminum dome tweeter. Reminds me of the KLH Model 5s. Yeah, I think that's right. Symbols sound really good. Metallic instruments sound really good, but it has a bit of bite. Now, don't think that I'm saying this speaker is fatiguing because I don't think it is, but it definitely has that metal tweeter sound. Center man, the hi hat, Nina Simone. Tick, 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 tick. Sounds great. All right, what are my final thoughts? I'll say this, the LS50 metas sound better than I remember the regular LS50 sounding. It's good. It's fine. Is it the speaker for me? No, it's not. And I'll tell you the reason why. One, I think it's too expensive. <sighs> At a retail price, by the way, this is a sword, my daughter uses it, she loves it. At a retail price of $1,600, you, my friends, are competing with the Sonus Faber Lumina 2 Amateurs. They have five names. Billy Bob Joe Thorpe. They're also competing with the Q Acoustics 5020s that come in around $900. Then you have speakers that are a third of the price that I think sound very similar, namely the ELAC Unify 2.0, which interestingly enough is also a concentric driver with the mid-range and the tweeter and is a three-way design sounds very similar to me. I think that's my biggest gripe about these speakers. Although the metas seem a little bit more dynamic than the first generation, it's not dynamic enough to move the needle for me. The Lumina 2 Amateurs from Sonus Faber, those are some dynamic speakers. Those have some excitement on top. I'll give them this, the LS50 metas. They do soundstage and image very, very well, and they should. They're better than I thought the previous generation was, but it's good, it's fine. And I tried to make these sound as good as they do. Do they sound crappy? No, they don't. They sound boring though. <sighs> and I've listened to a lot of speakers. I've listened to a lot of speakers in this price range. If you own the Metas and you love it, awesome. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but it's good, it's fine but that's all it is is a good speaker it's not a great speaker it's good it's fine i just wouldn't buy it